Hello, Hollywood Times viewers. Today, well, actually, Judy Shields here. Today, we welcome New York City Second Chance Rescue President Jennifer Brooks. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Hi, Judy. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you for dialing in. So where are you calling in from? Uh, so I'm currently calling from New York. And I am in the process. I was actually out walking some of the dogs that we rescued from this case and taking pictures of them. Yeah, that's what that came across. Uh, let me tell you, I get a lot of things that come come through my inbox. And I actually read the t title and I hesitated. I actually skipped it, you know, and then yeah. after a while, I don't know, like actually some time went by. I said, you know what? No, you've got to go back and read this, no matter how hard. And I I read it. I'm going to cry right now. I just like was in tears. And I said, I don't know how, how humans can do that. And I'm like I said, I'm going to cry already. So uh, that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to talk to you so bad. And we've been trying for a while, but I haven't been feeling too well. So uh, tell us about that. It was Mississippi 92. You, you rescued 92 dogs. So tell our uh, viewers about that. Sure. Yeah. So we are um, based in New York, but we rescue nationally. And Mississippi is one of the states that we do a lot of rescuing in already. And two of my volunteers were driving. They were actually transporting a mom and puppies for us. And they came across this um, area on the side of a highway where they pulled in and they just saw like dogs locked with chains on their necks, locked in these, you know, um, dilapidated makeshift kind of kennels with sitting in their own feces and just really, really awful conditions there. Um, and they spoke with, yeah, I know it's hard to, it's hard to believe that a place like this even exists. Um, but the South is a really rough place for dogs to begin with and you know this woman they they spoke to the woman who owned the property apparently what she said is that um she just people just started dumping their dogs there and she, that was the only thing she knew what to do with them um it's hard to it's hard to get the mindset because the shelters in mississippi basically they euthanize upon intake that's how that's how bad the overpopulation problem is in mississippi and in a lot of southern states so in her mind right she was saving these dogs from being killed which I, it's it's just all hard to comprehend you know um so once we heard that she was willing to let us come in, um, I just hopped on a plane and went down there with about 12 other volunteers. And um, we, we got all of the dogs off of the property. We vetted them. Our, one of our veterinarians um, got there and did all the vaccines and, and heartworm tested all of them um, on like a Wednesday and a Thursday. And then we got down on Friday. And we had our transport trucks and, you know, it was, it was really, you know, a picture when you see a picture, it's, but then when I actually saw it with my own eyes, it was, it was really, I was crying. It was, it was awful. I know. It's like, it, and then do you get the volunteers there? They're probably, you guys have to do this whole, where well, you probably have to cry and let all that anger out first. Right. I mean, how long does that take you to be able to get through that and to actually touch the first dog? Seriously. I know. I mean, as a rescuer, sometimes it it actually goes in the opposite way. Like you, you go in, you do what you have to do, and then it starts to kind of sink in and hit you after. I mean, it didn't really hit me. I mean, until I was on the plane coming back to New York is when I like broke down about the whole thing, you know, because yeah. like when you, when you get there, your adrenaline is rushing and you just want to like help them and get them off of those chains and out of those, those pens. It was, Ugh, I've never seen it. This was our large, we've been around since 2009 and this was the largest rescue undertaking that we did this 92 dogs all at one time. When they all survived, right? Jennifer. They, well, there was, unfortunately, um, one of the dogs did pass. Um, he, we, when we got there on Friday night, we were, you know, getting re medical records together, counting the dogs, moving some of the like most critically injured off. 
And then when we arrived there on Saturday morning, she said some dogs broke loose and they actually attacked this other older guy and, and we rushed him to the ER, but unfortunately he passed. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 But other than him, they all did survive. Yes. Yeah. So you actually transported them back to New York City? So um, they went from Mississippi to our vet and we have like another hub, I like to call it in Georgia and okay. our vet. Yeah. She took in about 40. We put 40, uh, about 40 at a private boarding kennel in Georgia. And then uh, some of the critically injured were at our vet in Mississippi and the seniors. So as of right now, um, most of them are here in New York. They've come up. Um, and then we have still, we have about nine that are in Georgia. Those are the ones that were heartworm positive that our vet is treating. So they take a little bit longer, but they'll all be, they'll all be here in New York. Now I read where, you know, because they were, it's hard to even say, you know, laying in their own feces and dead rats and all this stuff around them. And I read, read about their fur. How do you take care of, do you have to shave them? Or how do you take care of that? Um, some of them we did have to shave because of the mats, the, the yeah. German shepherd. Um, they just, you know, a lot of them just needed a good bath and, you know, good vitamins, good food. I mean, it was so hot when we were doing all of this too. They were just, they had no shape. It was, it was terrible. The heat, the the flies, the excrement, yeah. Yeah. I, the dead rats. I mean, I couldn't get any worse. Yeah. And then the, so the dogs I read, you know, of course they're howling and in pain and stuff. So are they, are some of them skittish? Do, do you know, have to be careful. They may want to bite because they don't know what's going on. How does that, how do you handle that? Yeah. Um, I mean, out of all of the dogs, it's amazing how many of them are just like loving and sweet after being through that. And after mm -hmm. being on chains, there were a few, there were a couple that are semi feral. So they're going to, they are in um, training programs now. Mm -hmm. And out of all of them, I, I think there were only two that um, were not adoptable. Wow. So how yeah. many have, how many have been adopted of the 92? Um, I would say probably about, well, we did have some other rescues come yeah. in and help us. So that, I mean, that was amazing animal okay. pad out there in Los Angeles. Took, really? Yes. What's yes. We, animal pad. Okay. They're an, they're an amazing rescue in San Diego. Um, they just did a huge hoarding case themselves from Mexico with like over a hundred dogs. Oh, they helped oh. us out and they took, I think 10. Um, yeah, they're awesome. And then we had um, uh, Granite Seat in Georgia took took dogs and just a lot of other rescues. Uh, Ollie and friends in LA took dogs. So we had dogs going. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, from, uh, from the ones that we took, I would say about 20, 25 um, got adopted and some are in foster homes also waiting to be adopted. So yeah. So you're a dog angel here on uh, here on Earth. <laughs> so tell us about your organization that you started. Yeah, so uh, we started in 2009 um, when I realized that here in New York that we had kill shelters. I never knew that. And after visiting one and seeing animals that were on the kill list, I said, well, I'm one person. I could take one, find it a home and keep doing that. And it just organically grew um, into a big, big operation. And we rescue about 1100 dogs a year um, here in New York, nationally. Also, if some, we do some international rescue. Um, we have a great, great team of volunteers. We have like 40 volunteers staff. We have um, two rescue centers. We just got another rescue center here in New York, closer to the city. And we have one in Westchester. Um, yeah, we, we help, we also help owned pets, like, you know, times are rough and we help people afford, you know, surgeries that their animals need mm. and we help the community with low cost bay neuter. So yeah, we try to cover it all. So do you have, um, can people come in like there for New York and learn about how to properly even take care of their dogs or if they're having problems, reach out to you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are going to be starting humane education classes at our new location as well um, for youngsters to come in. And we're going to have a pet food pantry where people who are struggling can come and pick up pet food. Yeah, so we have a lot of really great initiatives. So I wanted to ask because I, I think, you know, I've read too where during COVID, which was a bad time for all of us, you know, a lot of people were home. So, you know, they got dogs because they were home. And then when in reality, they had to go back to work, you know, they were turning in dogs. I mean, did, did you find that there in New York as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, it's really, I think that it's a little bit from the COVID situation. Um, you know, people who go back to work, getting, you know, letting their dogs go, getting rid of their animals. But I feel like right now the economy and there's a lot of people that are struggling. Yeah. So I feel that's even a larger reason, you know, since um, during COVID, there were no evictions. And now the eviction moratorium has been lifted and mm -hmm. people are starting to be evicted from their homes now. So it's like a really, you know, multifaceted issue that's happening right now. Um, the shelters are so over capacity and they're in, they're in the worst condition that they've ever been in, in all of my, I've been rescuing for close to 20 years and I've never seen it this bad. Yeah. It seems like the, there should be organizations like yours who can help these families who are displaced to at least put their animals somewhere where they know they can be cared for. And then, you know, continue to come and see them while they're trying to feed themselves and their kids, you know, that's yeah. what you offer somewhat too. Yes, we do offer emergency placement um, situations. If somebody has a fire or things like that, we try to, we try as much as we can, but we are also at, at capacity right now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having to say no is, is really, is really tough, but we have to worry yeah. about the work guys that we have in our care so we try to problem solve and provide you know financial help when we can yeah so how can our viewers help you know, um, donate to your cause uh, how do we find you how do they find you sure yeah um our i'll go on our website it's nycscr.org um, or even if you're not in New York, it's, you know, every single shelter out there is struggling right now. Go to your local shelter, donate. If you can volunteer, you know, rescues and shelters, they need transport help. You know, there's so many different, different things that you could do to help without taking an animal into your home, you know? So, so when you say yeah. transport, like if, if, like if I wanted to go to my local shelter and say, Hey, do you have a dog that's going to go to a foster home take that dog that kind of, is that what you mean by transportation yeah. yeah a lot of rescues need need volunteers for so many for transport also helping out at adoption events being a dog handler for a day yeah um collecting blankets and towels and bringing them to your local rescue and shelter you know there's so many so many different things that we need yeah i was thinking about maybe making up some flyers to put around my neighbor saying, Hey, if you have any, uh, if you're, you know, unfortunately if you've lost a dog or have leftover pet stuff, take it to the, cause we have a shelter, yeah. a really nice one, Ranch Cucamonga shelter to get people for that awareness. I think people just throw things in the trash and don't even think about it. Cause I lost, I'm a boxer person and I rescue boxers and I'm ready for another one, but we're trying to get our yard done. And so when I lost my two boxers, um, uh, 20, when was it? 2021, it was sad, but I, I thought about all that stuff and I says, wait a minute, I'm going to, you know, look it up. And sure enough, you know, I took all my stuff down there and it was just an amazing thing to, to know that their, their stuff was going to be, you know, used. used another yeah. animal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have definitely leashes, collars, you know, any, anything is helpful. Yeah. So you have any parting words for us? Um, just try to be kind and, you know, do something nice for an animal in need because there's so many right now. Yeah. Just like people got to have, have awareness, you know, you have pets, you had pets. It's just like, try to volunteer to, you know, to make yeah. a difference that animals, they're so amazing. They bring us so much love and it's, it's, you know, it is that unconditional love, you know, you can't wait to get home and they're just waiting on you and, and all you have yeah. to do is give them your attention for a while and take them on nice walks and treat them well. And they're like your best friend, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're the best. They well, give we, so much. 
Yeah, we wish you all the best. Uh, we'll make sure we get all your social media out there for our uh, viewers and readers to be able to get in touch with you and, and help wow. out. We appreciate you rescuing those 92 dogs, and we know you do something every day. So uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having us. You're welcome.